Have you ever wondered why every athlete pulling off this extreme stuff is most likely short? Well, that's because you gotta be short in order to do it. You've caused me to hate you. Basically, what you can possibly achieve in this sport depends only on one thing, which you can't change. So it's not your diet, how heavy shoes you will wear <laughs> while training skills, or even how hard you will train. It's all about genetics. Chances are near zero. Let's be real here. Not everybody will be perfectly made for calisthenics, like for example being tall, which can be useful in basketball or volleyball, but on the other hand, you will probably suck in parkour. You know, this was always the stuff for short, agile hobbits. <laughs> Anyways, so what's the reason for being bad in calisthenics when you are... Sh you, you idiot! When you are tall. <laughs> Let's firstly go over the height, which actually wouldn't be that much of a problem. But here's the thing. Let's say that 160 centimeters tall guy is a standard human. And now, because for some reason nature will mess up with you, resulting in making you grow tall. And here comes the problem. In the better scenario, you will be just proportionally bigger than the standard guy. But what will, I would even say, destroy your future in calisthenics is ending up being 180, 190 centimeters, for example, just by having long legs. Like imagine wearing 20 centimeters tall platforms. <laughs> now, why I'm making from it such a disaster is because the most wanted skills, planche and front lever, are lever based skills. And the difficulty of them is set by both weight and height. Okay? By looking at them, you can, with using a common sense, say that hmm, if I would put 10 kg. Not 10 kgs, 3 or even let's say 2 kgs on the end of the lever, meaning your toes, it will drag me immediately down. That's why many people take off their shoes before performing these skills, which I find a little bit lame, <laughs> like that's maybe too much when you being able to hold something depends on 200 grams. <laughs> Now, what's the difference between having those 2 kgs, shoes on, or just longer legs? Now. None. Well, you can take off your shoes, but legs not. <laughs> so, I think that after I upload this video, people will start to amputate their legs. Back to the standard human, which has somehow big upper body, requiring to generate somehow big force to lift his legs into a horizontal position. Now stretch his legs by those 20 centimeters, so he's now 180. And suddenly his upper body, you know, his lats, biceps, triceps and so on, will have to generate enormous force to execute the same move, meaning to lean a lot more backward in front lever and more forward if you are talking about planche. And in order to be able to hold your body in this extreme, a uh, <laughs> extreme lean, you gotta build some serious mass and strength. Which brings us to the question, if it's even possible for this guy with some weird proportions. You know, we all have our natural maximum of muscle mass and strength we can build. And if nature messed up you this much, everything will be firstly extremely hard for you, right from the start, because of those legs. And secondly, and mainly, the ceiling will be so low, meaning no matter how hard you will try, you will never be as good as short guys. And we are not stopping. Stop! Adds to that having naturally fattier calves, for example, which are almost at the end of the lever. And I can guarantee you, you won't ever one arm planche, Maltese, or maybe even full planche. I don't want to live anymore. Look at Jose. Jose. Jose? My name is Jose. Fuck! Which has a quite long legs, resulting in achieving this after 10 years. On the other hand, short guys learn this under a year most likely. But as I mentioned at the beginning, if you are just proportionally taller, then you may still have a chance to be good, but still there might be a few things making it harder. One of them I already mentioned is not the height, but the size, which isn't that much of a disaster since the additional fat is spread evenly from your waist to your toes, 
but still it won't help you and still you will be dragged down by it in levels. In that case, but it comes in handy overall, is to be as much shredded as possible so you won't drag with you that fat. Okay. <laughs> Water break. So by knowing all this, we can say that all it takes to be good in calisthenic skills is to be lucky, short, light and in the best scenario having chicken legs. That's an ultimate combination which none, no matter how hard working tall guy can beat. Well, if he won't take steroids, <laughs> that's the only way how to beat a short guy. Basically skills are just about how skinny legs you got, since you can be 180cm tall and 90kgs, but if you will have extreme chicken legs or no legs at all, well then you aren't 180cm tall. You can planche quite easily. So Zdenek, it is this simple, when I have big legs, I don't stand a chance? Well, it is actually a lot more complex, because there are more variables affecting your performance. Come on, man! We've covered pretty well, I would say, <laughs> those legs. Another one can be how long arms you have, for which I will borrow this video from the mathematical master himself, Geek Climber. <laughs> His video showed us that longer arms will make levers a lot easier, but only levers, because it doesn't apply to normal exercises like pull-ups and push-ups, where you will need to travel a lot longer distance. Another one could be your lats in sessions. I mean, if you have high or low ones, which is also set by your genetics. And lastly, your genetics. What? By which I mean if you are naturally strong, or weak, because for example I am after those 6 years of calisthenics identically strong as an average Russian guy without ever touching a dumbbell. <laughs> That's quite sad. <laughs> but one thing that will always suffer more if you are taller and then heavier of course, are joints. You know, skills are meant to be performed with straight arms, which puts a lot of stress on your joints. And from what I've read, taller guys, if they are not abnormally tall, tend to have joints the same size like short guys. And just overall it is a lot harder to get moving a big tall body. If you love me, let me go. Again, that example with parkour. How much tall guys doing flips and all that have you seen compared to how many hobbits <laughs> you saw doing it? This is why I knew when Lysans and Huristov were in the same competition that it is already lost because every time when you will put a hobbit against giant, the hobbit will win if the short guy does for real calisthenics. Because for example, this Lysans battle <laughs> It is sad, but competing as a tall guy really sucks, because if there are not specific categories, at least for weight, then you will be most likely competing against almost like a cheater. He's cheating. He's cheating. No chance to win. <laughs> for sure, when you see a tall guy doing skills, it's hella impressive. Yep, that's true. And one more benefit is that taller guys have a chance to lift the heavier weights, not compared to their body weight, of course, but like 50 or 60 kg guy won't ever lift 150 kg on pull up, but 90 kg guy have higher chances of accomplishing that. Now you know why I am so against training legs. Since you wanna planche or front lever while having literally the worst build possible from nature. You really don't wanna make it even harder by putting more and more and more <laughs> mass on the thing which is holding you from doing planche and front lever. Of course there are a lot of variations because it doesn't have to be only a tall guy with long legs but also with short ones and same for short guys. And they might have short legs but also long ones compared to the rest of their bodies. They can have big legs even if they are short and so on. Exceptions of tall guys doing skills exist. We all saw them, Daniel Slyzans, Netco, they, they exist. So what you should take away from this video? Well, don't be sad if you are tall just by having long legs or like even proportionally tall. Everything has its own pros and cons because at least you will be always taller than your, than your girlfriend, if you have any. Any? And once you will build some muscles, you will look really good. 
bad thing is that you will most likely suck at skills and what? What? Maybe you won't ever do Maltese archer push-ups, one-arm front lever pull-ups. It is what it is. And you will just waste time by crying. Instead, go out, train hard, and you will see where your grind will take you in your Kaistings journey.